think... Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Where it's it's odd the news at the moment because events in Israel yesterday have understandably dominated the news agenda, which you could describe as the deepest of deep ends. Um, carnage, uh, the latest death of an eight-month-old baby uh, who inhaled tear gas. Um, interesting listening to the Israeli ambassador's comments in that news bulletin. I, I don't know whether or not he would have tried to claim that an eight-month-old baby was somehow hell bent upon breaching the border of Israel and uh, and killing Israelis, but the kid's dead nonetheless. And then at the other end of the news agenda, the shallowest of shallow ends. It's a, it's a, it's a couple of people getting married. And very sadly, one of their dads isn't going to come now because he's got into a little bit of bother with the paparazzi in the media. I refer to, to Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. And there's lots of other stuff going on, as, as Kareem just reminded us. We've got a state visit being undertaken by a uh, a, a, a Turkish president who locks up opposition leaders without trial, has hundreds of journalists under lock and key, and brooks no criticism. The kind of regime I used to think that Brits didn't break bread with. Um, but hey, Saudi Arabian Crown Prince was here that not that long ago, and Donald Trump's on his way here soon as well. Donald Trump, we discovered this morning, has essentially moved the embassy in Israel to Jerusalem in order to curry favour with people who think that... <sighs> I, I, again, I can't quite catch it when I say it out loud. And I've checked again and again and again, and it is just true. Why has he done it? Because the evangelical Christians who gave the prayers at the beginning and the end of the embassy opening ceremony believe that when the Jews go back to Jerusalem, Jesus will return to earth, everyone will convert to Christianity, and anybody who doesn't, including Jews, perhaps even especially Jews, will end up burning in hell for all eternity. So well done, everybody. I'm going to talk about British politics now, and I'm going to ask a question which might be... It might be a bit daft, but I, I, I don't think it is. Did you see the Sunday Times Rich List this week? So, I, I, I as you know, find myself in a very unpleasant place politically at the moment. It's essentially a, a, a shop doorway. I am politically homeless, and I know many, many people are persuaded by Jeremy Corbyn's um, uh, uh, credibilities and talents. I think his latest intervention on Brexit comes a little bit closer to explaining my scepticism and, uh, and, and deep sense of being unimpressed by him, but I, I'm not going to argue with you about that today. Um, I'm just going to look at the Sunday Times Rich List and have a look at the top 50 political donors. So. The richest men and women in this country can do whatever they want with their money. I, I think that's a freedom that is fairly important. And f many of them choose to give some of their fortunes, um, all amassed, I'm sure, in entirely transparent, fair and fully paid up tax uh, circumstances. And they elect to give some of their fortunes to political parties, either to the sort of central party machine, or in some cases perhaps to individual politicians, to... Uh, actually, no, this would be political donors. This would have to be made by individuals or their companies in 2017 to a political party. Did you see it on Sunday? Did you still buy the time? Did you see it? It's, it's quite interesting. Um, I don't know if I... Shall I read you all of it? I've got all 50 of them here. So... Lord Bamford, who runs JCB, he's top of the list, just shy of two and a half million pounds. Who do you think he gave it to? Conservatives. A chap called John Armitage, one just, just, just south of one million three hundred thousand pounds. Who do you think he gave it to? Conservatives. John Griffin, one million forty-one thousand five hundred pounds. Conservatives. David Brownlow comes in fourth with a, a mere £737,992. How do they get the two? Where does the two come from? Someone been shaking a tin? Conservative. Andrew Law, £617,730. Go on, have a guess. Conservative. Ian Taylor, £592,533. Conservative. I'll give you the phone number now, because I've got a feeling you may have worked out roughly which direction this traffic is travelling in. And the question I really want you to answer is, why do they give money? 
Why do these individuals give money to that party? That's all I want from you. 0345 973 And you can be as... Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? You, you, you can be as mischievous or as boring as you like. Do you see what I mean? I, I, I just, I'll take any answer you've got, especially if you've ever been kind of involved in this world. 0345 973 I'm, I'm just working my way through the top 50 political donors, million upon millions of pounds given to a political party. And I've never asked this question before in all the years that we've spent together. Why? Why do individuals and their companies give huge amounts of money to political parties? And we'll continue to see just how varied the recipients of the largest individual donations are, OK? Where were we? Up to seven, I think. We've done Ian Taylor, haven't we? So we're up to seven. A chap called John Bloor. £532,000. Conservative. And we might need a drum roll at this point. Have we got a drum roll? We got it's not fair on Axel expecting to pull something out of the bag with no notice whatsoever. Because here are eight to I don't know whether they're brothers or, or, or husband and wife. Colin and Chris Weir gave half a million pounds to the Scottish National Party. Whee! And they come in at eighth equal with Lord Ashcroft. Ah. Yes, half a million pounds to the Conservative Party. Chat called Tony Gallagher, who I don't think is... Ca he's got a drum roll now. It's no use now, is it? Well, go on, play it anyway, otherwise you've been wasting your time for ten seconds. Does it have a denouement? Or does it just carry on rolling indefinitely? Ten, se ten more seconds, all right, as you were. Talk among yourselves. Give me a countdown in my ear that no-one else can hear. Scottish National Party! Eighth equal with Lord Ashcroft, who gave half a million pounds to the Conservative Party. Chat called Tony Gallagher, I presume a businessman, not Captain Snowflake and uh, alleged editor of The Sun. £475,000. Um, have we got any calls yet? Because I've got 50 names here to read through. Why do these men and women give so much money to that political party? 0345 6060 Obviously, I'm not going to permit any libel, but I'll permit cynicism on an epic scale. And how are we living in a country at the moment where this party that receives this much money from these rich people somehow seeks to claim that it's representing the interests of ordinary folk? Number 11, David Rowland, £424,500, Conservative. Sir Henry Angus, £362,500, Conservative. Sir Michael Hintzer, £347,943, Conservative. Peter Crudders, £319,500, Conservative. Lord Farmer and George Farmer, £309,250, Conservative. Charles Wigadar, £308,500, Conservative, 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 UKIP stroke Conservative. That's someone called Christopher Mills who comes in at... 28, um, 29, Conservative, 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 Conservative. Brings us to 43, Jim Milne, who um, I think we could safely describe as a man who keeps his options open. He's given £91,000 to the Conservative, the Labour and the Liberal Democrat Party. Richard Desmond, um, £86,800 to the Conservatives. Christopher Moran, eighty grand. Conservative. Conservative, Conservative, Conservative. Just coming in at 49 with the Marquis of Salisbury. The Marquis of Salisbury at 49. Do I hear Labour? Do I hear Labour? Do I hear Liberal Democrat? I've got Conservative. I've got Conservative for the Marquis of Salisbury. £72,500, the 49th biggest individual political donor in the country last year. And it's going once, going twice... Going three times again to the Conservative Party, which brings us to 50. The 50th most generous individual political donor in this country in 2017 was the McAlpine family, who gave £70,000 to the Conservatives. Why? That's all. Why? Imagine that I was minted. Oh, let's just take a moment. It's like the walk back from Budgeons after you've bought a lottery ticket. You just get that. I've said this to you before. Two quid for those daydreams. Biggest bargain in town. Unless, of course, you're short of two quid. Just take a moment to imagine I was really, really, really rich. Hundred, just a hundred million pounds. Like a euro millions. Like proper, proper rich. Kind of rich where you could actually lose a million pounds and not notice. Right? 
Why would I give money to the Conservative Party? Just tell me why. 03456060973 might be ideological, might be a thing of beauty, might be a marriage of money and massive intellect, or it might be something rather more cynical. But why? Why? Why would I give money if I was worth millions of pounds, like all of these people are? Why would I give money to the Conservative Party? And why don't any rich people give money to the Labour Party? Apart from old Jim Mill, but he gave some to the Tories and the Liberal Democrats as well, so I'm not sure he counts. Conservative Party donors was apparently to go upstairs for dinner with Dave and Sam. Mr Cameron insists these dinners were private and with friends and were not about fundraising. In the two years I've been Prime Minister, there have been three occasions on which significant donors have come to a dinner in my flat. In addition, there was a further post-election dinner, which included donors, in Downing Street itself shortly after the general election. None of these dinners were fundraising dinners, and none of these dinners were paid for by the taxpayer. I've known most of those attending for many years. But he has released the names of major donors who've enjoyed dinner in Downing Street. Among the so-called Premier Leaguers is the city businessman Michael Spencer, who gave the Conservatives £3.6 million. Financier Michael Farmer, who gave the party £3.3 million and the chairman of JCB, Sir Anthony Bamford, who was given 1.8 million. Peter Crudders, whose claims landed the Conservatives in this mess, was not among them. Now there will be an inquiry led by a Conservative peer. A Conservative peer appointed by the Prime Minister. An inquiry into the Conservative Party, by the Conservative Party, for the Conservative Party. It is a whitewash and everyone knows it. Their donors don't just buy policy, they elect the leader. That's why after he was elected leader of the opposition, the first thing he did was go up to the leaders of Unite, put an arm round their shoulders and say a warm, heartfelt thank you. And from my own point of uh, view, yes, I'm a notorious tax avoider. Uh, but <laughs> but I'd, like you to, I'd like you to know, in the confidence of this room, <laughs> that I still am. <laughs> and I'm proud of it. And do you know how I promise the you know, Chatham House rules, no journalists, <laughs> is every year, just before the end of a tax year, I see what my taxable income, and I give it to charity. And so, therefore, to that extent, I can balance both sides um, of that argument. So, I remain a proud uh, tax avoider. Owner has been fined £55 million for its part in the LIBOR banking scandal. Three of ICAP's ex-employees now face criminal charges in the United States. Justice Department officials accused them of deliberately undermining financial markets around the world in exchange for bigger bonuses. Labour is calling on the man who runs the company, a former Conservative treasurer, Michael Spencer, to give money he's donated to the party to charity. Porrick O'Brien reports. Michael Spencer, the boss of ICAP, on the right, with Prince Charles at a charity event in the company HQ three years ago. Here, he introduces him to some pirates. They are not the three traders that have just been charged with fixing LIBOR rates. One of them earned himself a title. They called him Lord LIBOR. And you don't have to understand LIBOR to understand what's going on here. An exchange between traders, kickbacks, the order of the day. If you can, please move three months up more than six months. Will be much appreciated. What happens if they go down? Three months looked higher yesterday p.m. Make six months go lower. They're going up. And then, the carrot. A Ferrari next year, if you can move three months. Other messages show how the ICAP brokers negotiated payments for fixing the Japanese yen LIBOR rate. Life's tough enough over here without having to double-guess the LIBORs every morning and get zippity doodah. How about some form of performance bonus per quarter from your bonus pool to me? You know, for the LIBOR service. The chief executive of the company said that the traders involved no longer work for the firm. He went on to say that others involved also don't work for the company anymore. So, that's that then. Not quite. It turns out this story has political legs as well, because said chief executive is one Michael Spencer. Michael Spencer is a former treasurer to the Conservative Party. Over the years, 
he's donated millions to them. Today, he responded to the scandal. I deeply regret and strongly condemn the inexcusable actions of the brokers involved. They have tainted the reputation of ICAP and indeed the financial markets as a whole. Their behaviour was simply wrong. Now some Labour MPs smell blood though. One has written to the Conservative Party asking them to return Spencer's donations. The Conservative Party this afternoon wouldn't comment and told us that it was a matter for ICAP. Oh, I love it when uh, real life matches my slightly frenzied fantasies. The, 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 the anomaly in that list of the 50 biggest political donors in the United Kingdom in 2017, Colin and Chris Weir, uh, who gave, I think, half a million quid to the Scottish National Party, um, is lovely. They did win the lottery. Uh, they won £161 million pounds on the Euro Millions, and because they're profound believers in Scottish independence, they just bunged a bunch of money towards Nicola Sturgeon's outfit, uh, presumably not in expectation of anything in return. And with the SNP, there's a purity of, of, of policy there. Whatever you think about independence, if you have an organisation that is dedicated to independence, that would be your reward, I presume, for the lottery winners. If, if the SNP achieves Scottish independence one day, they will feel that their money was well spent. But the rest of them... They've given money to the Conservative Party, except for old Jim Milne, who also gave some to Labour and the Liberal Democrats. I would have expected 10, 15 Labour donations out of the 50. The fact that 49 of the 50 gave to the Tories really does focus the mind on the question of why. What do they expect to get in return? 0345 973 is the number that you need. 12.21 is the time. Cena is in Chelmsford. What, what do they get, Cena? Why do they do it, do you think? Um, so, I, I have my own business um, and I do vote Conservative. I'm a member of the party. And, and my, So, my reason for doing so is because the Conservative Party are a, a political party that are built on meritocracy. So, the harder you work, the more you get. And um, I would believe that a lot of people topping the rich list are going to be hard workers to have got where they are, other than the lottery winner you just said. And um, therefore, that, that they really want to... The Marquis of um, Salisbury, you think? <laughs> um, I just think it's um, a way of supporting something that is, is built to support business. It's, it's built to you, support you, those you, that You just hard. sniggered. I just wondered how self-made the Marcus is. I don't know the fella, but um, is he self-made, the Marcus of Salisbury? I'm, I'm not going to say that 100% of that list is self-made. Did, did Lord like, Bamford found JCB, or did he inherit it from his dad? I'm not sure. I, it's just my perception. So who's your favourite Who's your favorite example out of those 49 donors of the self-made business person? Oh. I don't know. You've, you've stifled me there. I, I have no idea. Why did you ring in, then? My, because I own my own business and I vote Conservative, and that was my... Well, I didn't say give me a ring if you own your own business and you vote Conservative. I say give, give me a ring if you think you know why these people have donated hundreds of millions of pounds to the Conservative Party. And you said, I think it's because they're self-made business people. And I said, who's your favourite self-made business person? You said, no, I, no, no, I didn't say it's because they were self-made business people. Well, what I did you mean? Because I, be I, I believe that they believe in meritocracy. So um, I felt that un under Labour... It kind of eroded that. It doesn't matter how hard you work, you're still going to get money anyway. And there were a lot of. Well, what do you mean when you say it doesn't matter how hard you work? Because I didn't get any of that money. Where, where, where did it go? Well, I'm not talking about all fractions of society, but. Well, which there section of society are you talking about? That I know. I've got friends that were better off on benefits than they were actually working. What benefits were they on? Um, housing benefit and child tax credits. And so, so you think that people give millions of pounds to the Conservative Party because of your friends on housing benefit? No. Well, I why bring them into that. it then? I, I, my, my argument is, is that they believe in meritocracy. Well, you keep saying so the word meritocracy, but the, 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 the idea of somebody having two and a half million pounds to spare in a country where other people who've worked hard in the army, for example, are sleeping on the streets, meritocracy doesn't mean what you think it means, does it? I'm not saying that um, there aren't things that need to be changed. I absolutely. Well, what, what, what do you uh, think you are saying, Cena? So apart from I am a business person and I am a Conservative Party member, and, and then sort of just repeating the word meritocracy in the hope that it might start to mean something if you repeat it often enough. What, why do you think Lord Bamford gives two and a half million pounds to the Conservative Party? I think it's 
because he believes in the ideology of the party. Which is? Um, and the, the fundamentals of that party, which is, um, you know, it's, it's about preserving um, tradition. It's about... Um, preserving tradition? Work hard. Well, hang on. It's preserving about... tradition is the opposite of meritocracy, isn't it? We, we live in a monarchy with a very, very well-established and wealthy aristocracy. So... I think that there are parts of this society, for example... Your friends on benefits. Sorry? For example, your your friends on benefits, sections of society... No, no, I was going to say that. What I was going to say is that there are parts of society, for example, the monarchy, that, okay, fine, they might not be out um, sort of grafting in, in the same terms that a lot of my friends might be, well, hang on, it's, I thought it was a meritocracy. They are still bringing in. They are still bringing in money because that you know it, it's part of the role that they play in our in our culture and in our society. You're just um, you're just you're just, you're just saying words in a history. strange order now, that aren't you? Up. So under well, Labour, how was how was Britain not a meritocracy? Under Labour, it made it in, incredibly difficult for businesses to operate in a way where it's easy to employ people. Um, Between 1997 and 2008, you think that our economy was performing badly? No, I never said it was performing badly. I'm just saying. Well, you it thought was, it was performing worse than it has business, since 2010. As a small business, <laughs> it's very difficult to employ people under some of the things that Labour brought in. For example, um, and I and I feel. For example. Um, for for example. Um, the, the jobs that um, it, when you want to hire somebody, um, the, the bureaucracy that's involved in that, the, for example, the pension, the sorry, you don't really know what you're talking about, do you, Sina? I'm just saying what what I believe. Whether it's right or wrong is another thing. It's my opinion. Okay. I think that oh, we got there in the end. Runs their own, that, that, that runs their own business. Yes. Um, I think that they believe in the Conservative Party because they are the party that, that do help businesses flourish. They are the party H- that... How? Again, I'd ask for an example. What's changed since so 2010? Business. So I do a lot of stuff with the SSB in terms of... Phone line's gone a bit uh, funny now. Again, what's changed since 2010 that's helped you run your business? What's changed since 2010, sorry? Yeah, that's when that's we elected we the Conservative sorry, Prime Minister. That, that's, um, I feel that, yeah, so I feel that... Um, no, not feel, so my business, fact. Okay, so I started my business two and a half years ago, so I haven't got... So you've got no um, idea what it was like under first, Labour, then? First-hand experience. So when you said to me a minute ago it was much harder under Labour, you were talking out of the top of your head? No, my mum and dad run their own business. So, so, so what's changed for them since that. 2010? How has it got easier to run a business since 2010? So the tax, the way that you pay corporation tax and so on... So it, you pay less tax? No, 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 it's just simplified. So oh. you actually end up, because it's just a flat rate, so whereas before it was, uh, you had thresholds to... So you pay, pay less tax. tax? No, I actually, no, I think okay. I've been paying more tax than... So um, you only set up your business two and a half years ago. Yeah, so if you base it on the old model, if you looked at the modelling, I would have ended up paying more tax than... Uh, Labour than um, uh, under Conservative than I would under Labour. Well, hang on, put your but, mind up. But they simp- what they modelling simp- is this? Well, there's no threshold now, so it's just a flat rate. Yeah, OK. Have a great day. 28 minutes after 12. Why do you think Lord Bamford gives £2.5 million pounds to the Conservative Party? And, and just have a little think before you ring in. Um, and we don't have to pick on him. Uh, we could pick on any one of the 49 donors who didn't win the lottery before deciding that they were going to hand over their extremely hard-earned meritocratic cash to the Conservative Party. Whereas, of course, the Labour Party is funded largely by trades unions, which exist solely and exclusively to protect and promote the interests of... Wait for it. Working people. 0345 6070973 oh, is the number that you need. Um, it's hard to follow that, really, isn't it? Do you know what else we were considering talking about this hour? I love this story about um, charging more for larger clothes, plus size clothes, which one shop, uh, New Look, is now doing. Women who are size 16 and above will pay more for their clothes than thinner women. We're not going to talk about this, but it did occur to me when I was looking at the story this morning, I think Nick may have mentioned it. This is similar to my theory about Michael Bolton's hair, isn't it? You know, men who've got really long hair. I, I still haven't managed. I'm going to do this. Will you remind me on Thursday to stick this on Mystery Hour? Why 
do men not pay women's prices when they go to the hairdressers if they've got really long hair like Michael Bolton? I'm glad we did political donations instead. I think you can have too much, uh, too much light-heartedness. Phone lines have gone a little bit nuts on this, so um, in the interests of full openness and transparency, you can, of course, pick any answer you want to the question of why you think very rich people give so much money to the Conservative Party and not any other parties. But I, I, I would urge you just to expect at least one supplementary or secondary question from me, because if you don't expect that, it could all get a bit embarrassing. For anyone uh, under any doubt, this from Joe, it's so important to note that many people work very hard all their lives and still have very little. The idea that people are rich because they work harder than those who are poorer than them seems to me to be a fallacy. A most important thing, most important word in the English language is luck. Anyone who uh, thinks that their success in life has had nothing to do with luck is almost certainly an idiot. Um, albeit possibly a wealthy one. David is in Tooting. Why do these millionaires only give money to the Conservative Party, David? Yes, hello. Afternoon, James. Gosh, your previous caller fell apart like a cheap suit, didn't um, she? I wonder what business she's in. I, 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 yeah, I've been in business for 50 years, James, but I'll tell you why. Go on. They hope to gain influence for the narrow interest of their own businesses. James, this is a systemic problem. I don't blame the companies uh, or the individuals for offering or giving the money to their political parties, and I don't blame the parties for taking it. But it is a systemic problem. It's a recipe for corruption, and we won't change it unless we change the system. So in other words, we need to be funding political parties from public money. Um, we should make it illegal to give more than, I don't know, five grand a year by any individual or business. So, so when, when you say you don't blame the parties for taking it or the individuals for giving it, you're, you're kind of doing that, um, well, crikey, that's the system, you'd be daft not to play it argument. Well, James, they have a no, I, I agree with you in a way. I'm just wanting, clarifying your position. Say again? I'm just clarifying your position. It's that's the system, you'd be daft not to play it, especially if you've dedicated your life to accruing as much money as possible. Why the hell wouldn't you bung some of it to a government who are going to pass policies that will make you even richer? Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I thought so. I thought so. I thought so. It's a recipe for corruption, but yes. these companies have a duty to their shareholders, and if they think by giving large donations to political parties, they are going to gain an advantage and influence for their business, uh, and it is in the interest of their shareholders, it's their duty to their shareholders to do it. But we need to change the system. I'm not in any way condoning it. I'm condemning it. No, I know. It. I know you are. I just wanted to clarify. I did. So, I mean, it's... It's a, it's, a, it's a bizarre system, isn't it? The, um, the, 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 the way that it's been allowed to, or it's been perpetuated under successive governments. Presumably, Labour was getting more off millionaires in, in Tony Blair's day in the run up to 97 and afterwards. I don't know, I haven't got the numbers. Maybe, maybe, but you know, I mean, the same thing should apply to trade unions, but um, yes, they're, they're members who make small donations, obviously. They pay um, their subs and then the union gives a chunk of change to the Labour Party. Exactly, do yeah, so, so that's okay, but this idea of allowing people to make huge donations, it's simply a systemic problem, and like I say, it's a recipe for corruption, but it's easy to fix, just change the system. <laughs> I was with you all the way until the end. It's easy to fix, just change the system. Well, I mean, the answer's easy. I didn't say it would be easy to implement. No, you didn't. You're, need to do. You're quite, have you ever donated to a major political party, David? Uh, I think I once gave 20 quid to the Conservatives. Fantastic. Money well I spent. I no longer vote Conservatives. Oh, why not? They're a meritocratic party. Because I'm a landlord, mate, and they're trying to put small landlords, landlords out of business. <laughs> this is covering a lot of ground. Huh? You mean by changing the... the, the the situation for buy to let for for small landlords well i wish they're, they're taxing landlords on their turnover i wish they'd do it to the banks well who are you gonna who are you gonna vote for then well i'll probably vote like i used to do lib dem um you know for the wise old gray-haired man who's not jeremy Corbyn. strong and stable vincent cable thank you very much david Twelve thirty-eight is the time john is in south croydon um i didn't know that we were splitting croydon up according to the points of the compass he's delighted to have you here john what would you like to say Thanks, James. Oh. First time caller to your show. I, I would concur with everything that David said. He was good, wasn't he? Uh, Apart from the bit where he said it was easy. <laughs> and when the, well, it is easy. Now, now we have things like direct democracy, five-star movement. The people can actually 
uh, change the system. So the system has been very difficult to change till now, but five-star movement... Uh, in in Italy, nowhere. you know, they, they promised yeah. every voter an actual check. Yes, correct. Right. Um, which, which I don't agree with, but the direct democracy model, which works in Switzerland as well, seems to be the way to change the system. And I think the system is broken in the fact that you, you can't blame companies for giving our individuals to get a better tax rate because they make more money. At the same time, you can't blame parties for taking that money. So clearly the system's broken, but you, you're not going to get turkeys to vote. No, 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 yeah, no, no one's ever going to break it because if it looked like Jeremy Corbyn was going to get in... Well, no, that's not true. Tony Blair's a better example. I bet in the run-up to 97, I remember he got a bunch of money off Richard Desmond, didn't he? Because... And there was the Formula One money as well that went to the Labour Party, and then that tobacco ban ad on advertising was suspended for a little bit longer. I, 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 I mean, they're going to try to curry favour with whoever is in power. So all that confuses me to... Is direct democracy. Well, you're, um, you're obsessed with direct president. democracy. It's never going to happen here, mate, under a two-party first-past-the-post system. Yeah, so first of all, you have to beat the first-past-the-post system with, let's say, a new party, and then bring dem direct democracy in, and then the, pe the power goes to the people and all the big decisions. There you go. Easy peasy. Uh, between the two of you, my last two callers have completely changed the face of the British political constitution and got rid of the potentially corrupt practice of individual political donations. Is there a positive analysis on this? Oh, three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Because we hear a lot, usually from liars, often liars of a slightly racist persuasion, about how ordinary working class people have been left behind by the elites. Wasn't Lord Bamford one of the biggest donors to the Brexit movement as well? Not quite where the elite tab would fit in with someone who's got two and a half million quid to spare for the uh, Conservative Party. And, I don't know, <laughs> a bloke who's struggling to make ends meet and will possibly lose his job after the company he works for ceases to be able to trade with the biggest single market in the world on entirely tariff-free terms. Oh, well. Fiona's in Shepherds Bush. Fiona, what would you like to say? Good afternoon, James. Hello, I'm Fiona. a second-time ever caller. You're very welcome. Right. Absolutely. Right. Um, the David difficult and... second call, Fiona. Thank you. David and the last caller said loads of things I wanted to say, but oh. I started off by wanting to say, you know, what is the purpose of government in the first place? So, please don't ask me. <laughs> no. no. But, um, why isn't it absolutely illegal that people can just give money? You know, and my idea is that the government gives every party with a standing MP the same amount of money, and it's up to them to convince us they're the good guys or they're going to do what we want. So they get money a couple per MP. It makes it harder for any. I know that you you will immediately. Well, no, not per MP, per group. It's got to be that, otherwise it gets far too complicated, but that stops all this illegal, which I think it should well, be. Well, it's, it's not illegal, and, and that's I what know. makes it all the more remarkable that the list um, is... Uh, I mean, it is ex almost exclusively conservative, apart from a couple of lottery winners who gave half a million quid to the SNP, a bloke who split his donations between the Conservatives and UKIP, and finally, um, a fellow who, who backed all three major parties, which is, is, is nothing if not democratic. It's an well, odd one, isn't it? Worse, um, you know, that's even worse, James. So, um, seriously, if everybody had an amount of money given to them and they said, right, there you go, you get on with it, there's so many things that MPs aren't allowed to do and uh, parties aren't allowed to do that are legal, and yet this is okay. I know. It's, 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 it's some, some days, no, it is. It's, it's what I call a meta topic, Fiona. When we have a conversation like we're having and we glance at the clock and realise that the time is flying, but actually I, I then want to ask you almost philosophical question about how this system has been allowed to survive for so long, and that's where I arrive at the conclusion that presumably Tony Blair's Labour Party benefits from it, otherwise they'd have got rid of it. Yes. Jeremy Corbyn's Labour Party, highly unlikely to benefit from individual donations from the richest people in the country. Yeah, which I don't know enough about it, but I just feel so strongly about, go back to the purpose, what I said at the beginning, what is the purpose what of government? What is the purpose of government? Um, to, to serve yeah. the people, not necessarily to reflect the interests of people who've got millions of pounds to spare in political donations, but, you know, at least we're a meritocracy. Marty's in Belfast. Marty, what would you like to say? Hi, James. Good Hello. to talk to you again. Uh, I think it's really, really simple. Uh, 
somebody has to be in charge of the government, uh, in charge of the, the country. Yeah. And the donors give the money for probably two reasons. One, they get tax relief on the contributions or the donations that they make. Are you sure? I'm, uh, I'm about 90% sure. Okay. Um, but the, the donations will go to whichever party is likely to help their business thrive or prosper. Now, is that is that that's not wrong in and of itself, is it? Oh, no, it's not wrong. I'm, I'm not saying it's no. wrong. I'm just saying I think the reason that um, the donors give the money uh, is for. I say self-interest. If somebody's running a very large business and they, they give half a million quid to one mm. party or the other, they're not going to give it to a party that they think is going to hurt their business. No, they're not. I, no. I, they're, they're, and by hurting their business, you mean making them pay more tax so that the NHS or the teaching profession could be better funded? Uh, not necessarily. <laughs> I'm being uh, a little I bit disingenuous. I'm, 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 no, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I mean, there's nobody more sceptical than me about politics, with a well exception, which is you. Um, but from a business point of view, it, it, even the practicalities of running a business have, have changed. It's becoming more and more complicated, more difficult. And I think these donors give the money to the party that they think is going to make life a little bit easier overall for them to create more jobs. Well, uh, yeah, um, I, I, well, yeah. Ah, okay, so there's a positive there, then. If they're going to create more jobs, and I, I, again, I'm slightly uncomfortable with this idea that they donate money because it's um, workers have got too many protections or it's too hard to hire people. But I take, I take your point. I guess I'd be looking for the positive analysis of these donations translating into policy changes. Um, the most obvious, I think there's a pledge in place to reduce corporation tax, isn't there, in 2020 to 17%. It currently stands at 19 So I guess the more corporation tax you pay, the more after that comes in, money you're going to have to left over to make donations to your favourite political party. It's 12.46. We are, with mixed success, just wondering why, um, of the 50 largest donations two political parties in this country in 2017. 49 of them went to the Conservatives, in part or entirely. In fact, the only one that didn't was some lottery winners who I've fallen in love with, despite I don't think I've heard of them before, and just decided to give half a million quid to the SNP. Which was weird, because in my introduction I said, if I imagine I won the lottery and I decided to give some money to a political party, why would I be doing it? And then, of course, that answer drives a coach and horses through my theory, because that's clearly a single-issue donation given in the hope of advancing the cause of Scottish independence. Alfie is in Bromley. Alfie, what do you reckon? Well, my, my uh, first of all, my first time calling James, so uh, hello. Hello, mate. <laughs> I just wanted to float an idea out there, really, yeah. and it was um, just for your previous callers. They were talking about setting a threshold um, for these donations. Uh, mm. what, what my concern is that if, if uh, companies, companies would be, e it'd be easier for companies to circumvent that threshold by yes. creating sub-accounts through their staff and... Um, you know, and getting their stuff in, and, and they're in a better position, I believe. The Conservative Party would be in a better position to do to do that, circumvent that threshold than than the uh, than the Labour Party. Group. Yeah, I, I also I, this is just sort of my inner. I don't know what the word is. We need new words, but but the. the, the the idea that government patrols what I can and can't spend my money on actually slightly perturbs me, even in the context of spending it on propping up governments. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? It's, it's just, yeah. it, I, I don't know, that my naivety extends far enough to defend this point, but I just, I'd prefer it if there were a few Labour donors on there. I, I, then I would feel a lot more comfortable about the actual practice of it. But the, but the, the almost unanimous destination of where this money goes from the richest people in the country. I, I can't help thinking that what, what helps someone with a million quid to spare politically is unlikely to help the rest of us. You see, you see my problem. Yeah, I, I do see it. And, and I also think that, you know, there is a lot of support from, you know, say, for instance, the BBC, you know, for the Labour Party. And oh, it's very it. apparent. For Jeremy Corbyn? Uh, yeah. You think the BBC is supportive of Jeremy Corbyn? No, well, the, the BBC, you know, in general, are supportive of the Labour Party. Go on, give me an example. Well, there's, 
Anyone anything anything at all, and I promise I won't haul you over the coals, anything at all that you think demonstrates a bias in favour of the Labour Party that the BBC have done in the last 10 years? Go on. Well, if you put me on the spot now... Well, no, mate, I didn't. I just repeated your own words back to you. Yeah, no, I, 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 I appreciate that, but, you know... So go on, one example. I, I, I don't watch BBC anymore because, you know... Well, I, so I, what put you I, off? What was the thing that put you off that they did that was clearly biased in favour of Labour? Uh, Probably Jeremy Corbyn with <coughs> Storm Z and you know high fiving. That, that was on the internet, mate. That was that was done by a company called Joe. It was put on Facebook. Joe. It wasn't it wasn't on the BBC at all. It was all over the BBC. Well, they, they reported Jeremy, Jeremy they, they reported the leader of the Labour Party during the election campaign enjoying the oh. biggest viral clip in history. Yeah, but I don't know that that's all I, bias. All I say, not just only on, on the, not just only on the, on you know. But what, what I'm saying to you is that all I saw from the BBC were you know people like Jeremy you know, Jeremy Corbyn with people like Stormzy who, who he knew had a political influence over young kids who didn't what, really. What have. program was that on? Sorry, this is the BBC I'm talking Yeah, I know. What programme was it on? Well, the, 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 the news state, the news station. So they, uh, report, they reported the news? They reported the news, yeah. OK. <laughs> How dare they. Bill's in Lancaster. Bill, what would you like to say? Yeah, uh, hi. I just wanted to say, I, I just think the, the wealthy donors just believe that a successful capitalist economy is in the best long-term interests of the country and from their personal experiences they believe the conservatives are the best to deliver that it, it, I, I like that analysis and it's by far the, the most gentle why don't they pay loads more tax voluntarily instead of giving it to the conservatives if it's the national interest that inspires them like said, Lord Bamford could have given two and a half million quid to the Inland Revenue couldn't he that, and then it goes directly to nurses and to doctors and to roads rather than directly to the Conservative Party coffers. Yeah, that, that's a good point, but uh, maybe they could do a bit of both would be good. Yeah, but, so why do you think they don't? I mean, if your theory is correct and they give all this money to the Conservative Party because it's in the national interest, why do you think they generally employ fairly creative and gifted accountants to reduce the amount of tax they actually pay to the nation? Yeah, I mean, if they didn't donate these huge amounts, the Labour Party would be better funded and more likely to form a government. And so by doing it, they they are doing what they believe is in the best interests of the country. Or, or, or the best interests of people who don't want to pay more corporation tax, which arguably is against the best interests of the whole country. Well, they actually cut the corporation tax rate and received more in tax revenue. No, that's so, not true. You're, you're, that is true. Well, it's not. I think you're referring to the top tax rate of individuals, aren't you? No, I'm referring to the corporation tax cuts that have gone on over the last sort of five years. The well, tax revenue received. I, I shall, I shall take your word for it, Bill, on that one. I shall, you, do, I shall you, double you, check. You double check. I will. Um, because. So, if in favour of, if they're in favour of. of more corporation tax, which they think they raise by cutting corporation tax. I think my question about why they don't just make donations to the um, Inland Revenue directly becomes even more pertinent. I think that's a perfectly fair point, but ultimately, I think, especially recently, I think they're absolutely scared of what a, a socialist Labour government would do to the to the UK economy, and they, they actually think it would be an absolute disaster, and so they're, they're doing everything they can to keep us a strong capitalist country. Yes. When did they cut corporation tax? Um, it's, it's been reduced gradually. Yeah, well, when, the, when was the last, under under Theresa May or, 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 or David Cameron, when was the last big drop? I, I can't name specific dates, but, but you're, gradually... But you're certain, that, that you're certain that the amount of money raised went up? The, from corporation taxes increased over the last... Since the Conservatives been the been in power, they've gradually reduced the rate of corporation tax, and the revenue received from corporation tax has increased in that period. Okay, so what was it when they got in? I, I don't know the specific. What is it now? Specific date. Uh, it's he is it heading down to seventeen percent? What is it now? I know it's been above sort of. Well, so, you see, you don't know where it started, you don't know where it is now, but you're absolutely certain that they've raised more money while cutting it constantly. That's correct. Cool. Aaron is in Barbican. Last word to you today, Aaron. What's it going to be? 
Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm a first time caller, so be gentle. I don't think um, I can. I'm in the zone now, mate. I'm going to tell yeah. you head off if you offend or upset me. Uh, no, I won't. <laughs> I, I just think I think this is a long-term ideological thing with the Conservative Party. I mean, it's if you want to break it down, um, it's effectively you're looking at the establishment or the bosses um, versus the workers because by having Conservative governments in, the people in big business know that there's going to be a suppression of workers' rights, which ultimately big bosses see workers' rights or, you know... Uh, uh, when we've got favourable workers' rights as being a barrier to, to productivity and profit. Um, so effectively, with a Conservative government, from I'm, I'm 44, but from what I've seen of Conservative governments and Labour governments, um, the Conservative governments will try and uh, have a bonfire of workers' rights whenever they get in, and then the Labour Party generally try and reinstate them. And it's this is you know a major reason I can't understand why workers have voted for Brexit. I mean, if they wanted Brexit, they should have waited for a Labour government because to Brexit under the Conservatives is the worst-case scenario. There's going to be a bonfire of workers' rights. Well, they, they don't even pretend that there isn't. They just call it a bonfire of regulations. They don't say workers' rights. And I, I thought this was the case, but I was trying to be all nice to Bill. Corporation tax receipts have declined year on year for the last five years. So where Bill's getting his information from, I do not know. Um, probably the meritocratic times that our first call of this hour uh, publishes.